Hey, this is Brent Arnold, and today I want to talk about air. It's the it's what we breathe, isn't it? It's what we live for. We live for air. All right, so here I am looking at uh, the Adobe website, and of course you can read this yourself, but it talks about Adobe Air runtime. Now, back when it first started, uh, when it was released, they talked about the Adobe Integrated Runtime, so they refer to it as Air. Well, as I understand it, it's actually, it's not called the Adobe Integrated Runtime, it is called Adobe Air. So, if you want to be all PC about it, that's what it means. So we talk about, what is it? What is it? Well, it's a runtime, meaning that it allows you to take existing Flash content or HTML JavaScript content and run it on the desktop, for example. So uh, for the desktop, you have the ability to extend beyond the browser, right? This talks about beyond the browser. Well, that means that if you want to create an app that installs on the desktop, behaves like a native app, then you can take your Flash skills or your HTML JavaScript skills and create content that installs on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux. Now, what that means is you rely on the Adobe Air runtime in order for it to run. Now, if you're familiar with creating apps in the browser, uh, you, you know that there are certain limitations, right? There are certain things you can and can't do when it comes to saving to disk and, and running background services and other things. A lot of it is just not possible because of the nature of the web, right? The web is kind of this, people are, are browsing, they're looking, they haven't quite invited you in, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you haven't accepted everything. You don't know what's coming into you to the browser when you go click a link, right? So people are a little more wary of it. But plus, there's just a lot more fundamental differences when it comes to the interaction with the device, the machine, the desktop or the laptop or, or whatever. Now, when we talk about runtime for the desktop, a person installs the app, right? They they accept the uh, what the app is going to do. They can they agree that okay, this is going to behave like a native app that I install on my desktop, and so there are certain expectations that are different. So like saving to the disk, uh, having more control over things, uh, running background notices, alerts, things like that. That's expected. Now. The runtime that I've talked about for desktop, you can use HTML or JavaScript combined to create content, or you can use Flash, Flex, uh, specifically ActionScript 3, and to create content. So if you've created Swifts in the browser, uh, you can even package those and it'll run on the desktop. So uh, not only does it give you extended features, specifically for desktop um, and there's a whole host of things you can take a look at this sometime but uh, the other thing is this idea of devices so we run on mobile phones we run on tablets we run on televisions so that you can create apps that behave as native apps now this is a key point and I mentioned this in my uh, Steve Jobs was right video the idea is that understanding that the air runtime is just that it's a runtime that interprets your code that runs it on the device so you're not creating a native app in the sense of you wrote it in the native OS uh, language for example on Android it's the Android SDK which is a version of Java that it uses to create its apps on iOS you're using Objective C C++ or C and it's really combined you know in that native sense using the frameworks that are built in the native uh, operating system. Well, for Air, you're using a framework of ActionScript 3. You can use Flex. Uh, you can extend beyond, you know, specific mobile things. Like if we look at multi-touch, you know, there's this whole host of things, geolocation, accelerometer, camera, video. Uh, you could do camera and video in the browser and, you know, in the desktop as well but just understand that you're not getting the same native experience although it is near native I would say that it is close to native as you can get 
without having to write in that specific operating system in that language for that OS. Now people say, well, why not? Why, why can't we just do it this way? Well, the advantage is that you're using your skills that you already have. So if you're an ActionScript 3 uh, Flash developer, Flex developer, uh, HTML and JavaScript developer, you can create content for the desktop using those skills. Uh, now people say, hey, Brent, well, what about, you know, if I click back over here, it says that, uh, hey, it says HTML JavaScript. Why can't I use that for mobile? Well, uh, just the quick and dirty of it is in the desktop runtime for Air, you have uh, the WebKit browser, which uh, interprets the HTML and JavaScript. And so that's bundled with the Air runtime, right? So it relies on the WebKit renderer to create the, to show the content. Well, for mobile, it does not include the WebKit browser for however many reasons. And that may change, I don't know. But I think the reality of it is the WebKit component adds quite a bit to the install for the runtime. Plus you kind of step on people's toes when you're dealing with Android and iOS. I mean, Steve Jobs won't let you touch anything near his device. And so, you know, he'd never, you know, as soon as he lets Java, uh, sorry, Java. <laughs> as soon as he lets Flash into the browser and the runtime, then I'm sure he'll let all this other, you know, the, the floodgates will open. But anyway, the reality is that uh, it's not available at the moment. So you don't use HTML JavaScript, although you can use it indirectly. In other words, there are things like uh, if I click back over here to features, uh, there's uh, what we call the stage web view, which uh, allows you to use the browser, but that's hooking into the OS browser that's available um, to Android and iOS. So it's not packaged with it. So you can use HTML JavaScript, but really you'd wrap it with ActionScript 3 uh, APIs. Okay, so real quickly, let's talk about what is the uh, runtime. Wait, hold on. The Air SDK, that's what I meant to say. The SDK is, is a, a package of tools that allow you to create these apps, right? Create uh, Air files that run on the desktop, to create .apk files that run on Android, to create .ipa packages that run on iOS, to create .bar files that run on the Playbook and BlackBerry tablet OS. So these tools are all you need. Now you need code written in, you know, ActionScript 3 for mobile. Uh, you would need an editor of some kind. And so with that, you could certainly create all of these things, the uh, desktop browser uh, and mobile using the SDK and, a, and a editor. So it's all free, right? So you could certainly take advantage of that. Now, I would suggest that if you're not comfortable with the command line, you would certainly want to uh, take advantage of the different development tools so here are development tools. So it talks about Flash Builder, Flash Professional CS5, Dreamweaver. These here allow you to create Air desktop content and web apps, whereas these two specifically cover mobile development. So, and I'll talk about Flash CS5.5 and Flash Builder 4.5. You already know that. So keep that in mind. Those are the tools and that's the runtime. Uh, real quick, the documentation, when we talk about uh, the APIs, we're talking about specific functionality that's built in. Again, this is all ActionScript 3 stuff. This is if I'm talking mobile, then I'm talking ActionScript 3. Here, you have a number of uh, packages and class files. And notice that a number of these have this little symbol, the error symbol. This tells us that not only, so you have certain things that are available to the browser. And then beyond that, you have these additional things that are available in the air runtime. And then even with that, there are even more uh, APIs that are specific to mobile and APIs that are specific to TV, for example. So that's how that works. So keep that in mind. Now, just to recap, the air runtime is a intermediary layer, as, as it were, that allows you to take existing ActionScript 3 content for mobile and HTML JavaScript for desktop allows you to create apps and package them so that they install 
and behave like native apps on the devices like the desktop or mobile phones or televisions. So these are the tools that you would use and you have certain APIs, certain things that allow you to extend beyond the browser and that's really what it's all about. And so uh, in the next tutorials I want to talk about, uh, I'll start covering each of the cool mobile specific APIs. All right, have a good one. We'll see you in the next video.